Has the path been cleared for WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to finally leave London? Jerome Corsi reports on a series of unexpected developments which may allow Assange to leave the Ecuadorian embassy in London without fear of arrest. On Tuesday, WikiLeaks posted a tweet announcing the U.S. government had ended its eight-year-long grand jury proceedings against WikiLeaks. The tweet referenced a State Department press conference held January 2, 2018, in which the State Department spokesperson made a strong statement regarding freedom of speech that was couched in a reference to Iran. We support a freedom of the press here in the United States. We support the right of voices to be heard. And when a nation uh, clamps down on social media or websites or Google or news sites, we ask the question, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? We support the Iranian people and we support their voices being heard. The WikiLeaks tweet suggests the State Department's reference to freedom of speech in Iran was a coded communication intended to extend the umbrella of free speech and press rights to WikiLeaks. It is not clear that Assange has violated national security laws, even if it can be shown he published U.S. national security classified documents. Even President Trump's attorney has argued for Julian Assange's First Amendment right to publish. In December 2017, in the case Roy Cockrum v. Donald J. Trump for president, Trump's attorneys argued that Julian Assange had a right under the First Amendment to publish the DNC and John Podesta emails, even if the emails were stolen. The Trump campaign, and by inference Julian Assange at WikiLeaks, could not be held liable under the First Amendment for a disclosure of stolen information if the information published involves a matter of public interest and the speaker was not involved in the theft. In May 2017, the government in Sweden dropped the rape case against Julian Assange, for which he has maintained his innocence. Today is an important victory for me and for the UN human rights system. But it by no means erases seven years of detention without charge. This ends the four-year-long attempt by the Swedish government to arrest Assange via a European arrest warrant. In December 2017, cited a UK tribunal that declared WikiLeaks to be a media organization and a free speech advocate. These are designations that could carry a legal importance in placing Assange under free speech protections, both in the UK and in the United States. Will President Trump pardon Assange? Now, followers of QAnon understand that QAnon has forecast several important developments in code. And on Christmas Day, QAnon posted another cryptic message on the Internet bulletin board 8chan. Now, Infowars.com has posted on Scribe.com a decoding of this cryptic QAnon Christmas Day post. You can read that breakdown in its entirety at this article up at Infowars.com. It's titled, Trump Clears Path for Assange to Leave London. It's a really interesting breakdown of this cryptic code from QAnon. Very interesting here. And on New Year's Eve, Julian Assange posted to Twitter a cryptic string of numbers that appear to be a dead man's switch, linking possibly to a new cache of WikiLeaks documents Assange's associates would post should Assange be arrested. Leanne McAdoo, Infowars.com. In ancient times, man roamed the earth in a constant state of hunting or being hunted. Introducing Caveman, where cutting edge science meets ancient super nutrients. Secure your bottle right now at Infowarsstore.com. It's been almost four months since President Trump announced his intention to end DACA, that's Barack Obama's program that hands out work permits to illegal immigrants who arrived in this country as minors. Since that time, lawmakers have been trying to hammer out a plan that would protect DACA beneficiaries from being deported. Now, trying to cut a deal is reasonable, but amnesty should only be given in return for real and long-term immigration reforms. Otherwise, will amount to yet another betrayal, the kind that voters have seen many times over the past 30 years, the kind that got Donald Trump elected in the first place, actually. America deserves real borders and policies that put American interests first instead of an endless cycle of amnesty coupled with empty promises of future border enforcement at some point. And that's what we've had for a long time. United Behind stricter immigration laws should not be a heavy lift for the Republican Party. For one thing, Americans want it. They want it badly. 
We know that because a new poll by Numbers USA asked likely voters how they felt about various aspects of our immigration policy. And the answer sounded a lot like a Trump campaign speech. Consider chain migration. 57% of likely voters said that if DACA beneficiaries get amnesty, they shouldn't be allowed to bring their family members here. Just 31% of voters disagreed with that. How about the diversity lottery? That's the program that selects 50,000 people every year to enter the United States, gives them visas. They're selected pretty much at random without regard to any qualifications, including English knowledge or job skills or cultural fit. 60% of voters said the diversity visa lottery ought to be abolished entirely. Only 29% supported it. And then there's E-Verify. That's the program that allows employers to check the legal status of people they're going to hire. 57% of likely voters say Congress should require E-Verify for all hiring so that employers can't claim ignorance when they hire illegals. Just 23% disagreed with that. And voters aren't just opposed to illegal immigration, by the way. A strong majority wants to cut all immigration, including legal across the board. Currently, this country admits about a million legal immigrants a year. 60% of those asked said they'd like to cut that number in half, if not more. In political terms, those numbers are huge. Republicans would kill for that kind of support on other issues, all kinds of other issues. Restricting immigration is a lot pop more popular, for example, than defunding Planned Parenthood or cutting taxes for the wealthier, cracking down on marijuana, bombing distant countries, more popular than all of that. It's also, of course, the main thing that President Trump ran on last year and probably the central reason he won in that upset victory. This should not be hard. Just a month ago, the Republicans united to pass an unpopular tax reform bill. They should be able to come together to pass a far more popular form uh, of immigration reform. Yet somehow, that's not happening. In fact, the opposite is happening. Apparently, a number of Republican senators are prepared to cave completely to Democrats on this question, agreeing to amnesty with no serious concessions in return. One proposal would simply delay chain migration rather than ending it while expanding the scope of the amnesty for DACA recipients and reallocating diversity lottery visas to a different class of unskilled immigrants. Not only would a deal like that hurt the country, voters have said very clearly again and again they don't want it. And this is a democracy after all, or at least it was. You have to listen to what voters want if you're a lawmaker. If you see that kind of deal come out of Congress, and you may, the Republican Party is done. It's over. It's toast. It'll be a short epitaph, too. Suicide. Congressman Sean Duffy is a Republican representing Wisconsin, and he joins us tonight. Congressman, thank you for coming on. So, hey, Tucker, it's good to be with you. Happy New Year. The Happy New Year. So these poll numbers are really striking to me because they show that the public is tougher on immigration, including legal immigration, even maybe than the current president was during the campaign. And I'm wondering if this news is filtered down to Republicans in the Congress who seem way more liberal on immigration than their voters. Well, listen, Tucker, I don't know that the Congress is actually that liberal. At least the Republicans aren't that liberal in Congress. Now, we do have some outliers that wouldn't mind having a, a DACA amnesty fix without any border security or any fix of chain migration. That's true. But a vast majority of Republicans in the Congress, we stand with President Trump. We want to uh, we want to fix the situation we have with the DACA kids. We think that's reasonable and fair. But in exchange for that, we want to secure a border. We want to build a wall. We want to fix chain migration. We want to fix the lottery system. So, and I got to tell you what, if Democrats don't start to negotiate fairly on this issue, there will, no, there will be no deal for the DACA kids. So, I, I, listen, I, I get your concern, but I got to tell you what, I sit inside our Republican conferences, and there's a great unity around this issue of fixing the root cause of the problem that continues to bring new people in who, Tucker, they just pack their bags, and they decide to come into our country on their own, where we believe that Americans have a right to pick and choose who comes into our country. We want, we want the people that graduate from MIT and Harvard that love America, or even the people that will come and work up on our Wisconsin dairy farms where those are jobs that our own people won't take. We need those kind of people who love to work and love our country, but we get to pick and choose them. You just don't get to pack a bag and come across the border and say you're going to be an yeah, American and get amnesty. I mean, pardon my that's skepticism. So the president runs this campaign that's different from the 17 other campaigns Republicans are running really in one respect. He's tough on immigration. He says he wants to build a wall. We're a year in. Republicans have unified to pass an unpopular tax bill. They try to get health care through. They've done all manner of things. They haven't actually gotten together to do that, the one thing he ran on. Why is that? 
So listen, I, I hate to get in the weeds with you, but you know that we could pass a funding bill for the wall in the House. Um, but we can't pass that kind of bill in the Senate. Though Republicans control the Senate, they have this thing called the filibuster rule. You need 60 votes, which means nine Democrats have to vote for that funding. That becomes very challenging for us. So I would love if Republicans could ram through a funding bill for the wall, but that's just not the reality of politics in the Senate. So we're going to have to leverage DACA in exchange for border security and other immigration reforms. That's just the way the Senate and works. So, I, mean, I don't okay, like so, it, but that's the truth. So just to, to, to get to one of the key questions in that negotiation, chain migration. So I think most people look at this and say, you know, you came into the country illegally. Maybe your parents brought you here. Maybe you came as an unaccompanied minor, but it's illegal. You shouldn't be allowed to bring all your relatives with you. What percentage would you say of Republicans disagree with that statement in the House? I think a vast majority agree with the fact that, they sh that if, if you're a DACA child, you shouldn't be able to bring in your parents through chain migration. But let me just take a step back. Tucker, Democrats want these children to become citizens within five years and then through chain migration be able to bring, bring their parents into the country legally who brought them, the child, in unlawfully. This is insane. Um, listen, Republicans aren't going to stand for that. If, to your point, Republicans might not have run an immigration reform. But the poll numbers that you cited and the success of Donald Trump have made it very clear that we can have a stronger backbone and actually fight for immigration reform that works for the country. And that's one of the benefits of Trump and him driving a message about equity, equity and fairness in immigration reform. So I think this the Republicans are going to uh, are going to hold the line and just if they don't and I think we will. But if they don't, Donald Trump won't sign any legislation that doesn't have a border wall funding component to it. He's not going to yeah, sign it. I don't know about that. I 